Car crash cases, defective products, dangerous drugs, injuries, and abuse. Across the state of Alabama, the attorneys, proudly sponsored by the law firm of Hollis Wright, are here to serve you. Your tough legal questions answered by our experts. The attorneys with Josh Wright from the law firm of Hollis Wright and host David Lamb. Hello and welcome in to the attorneys. We appreciate so much you joining us this Sunday evening for the next half hour. We've got a panel of experts assembled to deal with family law. And we would love for you to be a part of the conversation. The best way to do that, you'll see the information at the bottom of the screen for you to call, text and email. You get your questions along to us and we'll be glad to pass them along. Leading our conversation tonight, as he often does from the firm of Hollis Wright, Josh Wright. Good to see you, sir. Great to see you too. How you doing? Doing well. Good week. It has been a good week. Yours? Uh, you know what? It's been great. It's been great. It's um, uh, been a busy week in the Wright household, but uh, things are settling All down. good as we sit here tonight. Absolutely. Good. Uh, all right. So we've done uh, child custody and child support shows before. We have. We have a new guest, Chad Hopper from uh, Buttram Hawkins and Hopper, who's going to be on with us today from Center, Alabama. Uh, and in his firm, he does some of this work. Uh, we're going to be putting a little bit of a new spin on the topic, though. We're going right. to we're going to get a little more in depth on how child support and how the child custody laws work and apply in everyday circumstances that the viewers find themselves in. Um, so Chad is one of the experts in this area. He's a great resource for us to be able to go to, to come all the way from center, to come down here and uh, be on our show and talk about it. First of all, just so glad to have you on here today. Thank you. Thank you, Josh, David. I, I'm proud to be here. Thanks for having me. I needed to give a shout out to your son, uh, Cade, who's come down all the way from uh, center, who is, is in our studio audience hanging today. Out. Yes. He's going to be hanging out with us today and uh, maybe we'll even get a question from him okay. that he can pose to dad at some That'd point. How good. about that? That'd be that great. Work? Yes, sir. All right. So let's, let's kind of, let's set this topic up just a a little bit. Uh, there, there is a significant difference between support-based issues and custody-based issues. Are there not? Yes, sir. Yes. How, uh, just kind of give us a give us kind of flavor for the topic itself. Uh, child support deals with the financial obligations that a parent has to the other parent. Typically, the non-custodial parent, the one that that the child is not living with, has to provide the financial uh, support. That's the child support. Child custody deals with the judge making a determination about where a child is going to live. Uh, is the child going to spend most of the time with mom, most of the time with dad, or is it going to be what's called joint custody, or, or sometimes the attorneys will call true joint custody, seven days with mom, seven days with dad, or, or any other variation of that. And it's very fact specific. It's very, the uh, judge has to decide what's in the best interest of the child in making that determination. So I've been amazed when we've done these shows before and I've learned more and more in the shows about how the law uh, kind of dictates uh, how support is going to be paid um, and how custody issues are addressed. But ultimately, at the end of the day, um, isn't the, the kind of the, the system set up to allow the court to have pretty significant discretion to make judgment calls for some of this stuff? Absolutely, Josh, absolutely. The, the judge in each individual case mm -hmm. is going to make a determination, and that's very fact specific. In some cases, you've got great parents. You've got parents that uh, really look into what's in the best interest of their child, and those, those are the parents that the judge will lean more toward giving a joint custody arrangement. If you've got parents that are at each other's throats, uh, obviously if you have parents where there may be drug, drug addiction issues, alcohol issues, a, a variety of things, well those parents are, are going to see their children a limited amount of time. So I want to break this down just a little bit um, and, and, and kind of delve into it. When we, look at, when we look at, for example, legal custody versus physical custody, um, that doesn't necessarily mean equal time among parents, does it? No. If you're dealing with sole legal custody, Typically, that's a situation where one parent has the primary residence. The other parent, which is called the non-custodial parent, typically gets a visitation schedule every other weekend, uh, half the holidays. Uh, that's a situation where one parent is the, the legal custodian or the primary custodian, and the other parent visit, visits on an every other weekend basis. Uh, when I started practicing law about 15 years ago, a lot of times the mother was typically the primary custodian. Mm -hmm. Father was the every other weekend dad. Uh, now it's changed a good bit to where the courts favor joint custody. If okay. there is any way possible, the judge is going to try to make sure dad sees the children half the time and mom sees them half the time. So we're seeing a lot more of that now 
than we used to see. What do you equate that to? What is something changed in society? Have the courts become more progressive? What, what do you What do you think? I think so. I think it's a situation where a lot of the judges, younger judges, are coming in and they're seeing that the roles in families have changed. Mm -hmm. That dads play a play a significant role in taking care of the children, uh, more so than in the older days when when dads would would work and moms would stay mm -hmm. home. How does that work if, if a job takes one of those parents out of state? How, how does that factor into that equation? David, that's a, that's a good point, and it's, it's something that's factored in by a judge. You could have a great dad, but if mm -hmm. he's not there, yeah. if he's on the road, mm -hmm. then, then mom's going to have the primary custody typically, and, and dad's going to get to visit. And it may not be an every other weekend yeah. type visit. It may be based on the, the father's work schedule. Mm -hmm. Do you have the ability, let's assume you've got a uh, uh, cust uh, custody circumstance uh, uh, set up through the court, courts approved it, stamped off on it, and there are differing opinions about whether dad's doing his job, mom's doing her job, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing pursuant to whatever court order they have. Do you have the ability to go back to the court and make adjustments to that custody um, set up? You do. It's called a petition to modify, okay. and we do a lot of those. If, if circumstances change, whatever those circumstances may be, or if one party's not following the judge's order, you can file a petition to modify, go back to the judge and say, my wife or my husband is in contempt of court. They're not following the order. Or uh, like David pointed out, there's been a job change maybe, mm -hmm. and we need to address this because the order that talks about who's paying what or the, the order that talks about when I visit with my child, it can't be followed anymore for whatever reason but that would be taken care of by a petition to modify. Chad, I get a, a lot of questions um, to the show about information and which parent gets the ability to have the information that the other parent has. And it's amazing the dispute that that creates between family members. I guess I hadn't been through it, so I don't know the emotions involved in that, but information like grades, legal issues, um, all sorts of other information. It, it sounds like a lot of that has to be approved by the court. It, it does, but there's actually a statute in okay. Alabama that allows a non-custodial parent to have access to the information, medical records, school records. So if a non-custodial parent goes to school and says, I want to see my child's grades, even though he may not have sole custody, he's allowed to do that by statute. All right, so I know we're going to break. When, I, when we get back, I want to talk about uh, child support because that is statutory. It's a complicated area of the law that I know Chad can bring us up to speed on. And I think it will really help the viewing audience for those people that are either going through this or have been through this in the past as to how, for example, changing circumstances can impact the, your support obligations. Right. Uh, and is there an enforcement agency, for example, if you don't pay your support? I want to talk about that when we get back. All good questions. We'll get to those on the other side of this break as we head to break a reminder of how you can join our conversation call text email get those questions into us and we'll pass them along stay tuned more of the attorneys coming right up i'm carter clay with the law firm of hollis wright thanks for watching the attorneys on wvtm 13. Now we hope you, a friend, or a loved one never need legal counsel for a case. But if you do, the goal of this show is simple, to provide answers and legal counsel when you need it the most. Your call to the show is free, so if you have questions specific to this show or related to other specific legal matters, call, email, or text us to talk with one of our lawyers. You can also follow us on Facebook or Twitter to learn about important legal news that could affect you or your family members or simply contact us by going to WVTM13.com and click on the attorney's link. Now we know your time is valuable, so thank you for spending it with us and for watching the attorneys right here on WVTM13. Welcome back in to the attorneys. I'd love to have you be a part of some good questions. Oftentimes our best questions come from you. Join the conversation. Would love to have you do so. A question we have here uh, for our guest tonight. What are some considerations that the court takes into account when deciding how much child support to award? 
the main thing, David, that's taken into account is the income of the parents. Okay. Uh, there's a, a, a sheet, and we, it's called the Child Support Guideline form. And the parents have to turn in proof of their income. So you take income of father, income of the mother. You then also take into account how many children you have. You take into account uh, whether there's any daycare expenses being right. paid and which parents paying health insurance. All that is factored into this equation. And once you've complete the, the child support guideline sheets, it gives you the number of support that is to be paid. And that's not a number that can be um, argued with. Uh, as long as you're turning in your correct income, that's gonna be the number that the judge has to use unless there's a joint custody situation. If it's true joint custody, dad has half the time, mom has half the time, oftentimes the judge could look at that and say, I'm gonna order no child support because dad's taking care of the child while dad has the child, mom's taking care of the child while mom has the child. Mm -hmm. If there's a big increase, let's say the father makes a lot more money than the mother or the mother's a stay at home mom, then the judge would still order child support even though it's a, a true joint custody mm -hmm. situation. Do you see um, less contentious uh, uh, divorces um, where the parents may be a little bit more aligned for the benefit of the children? Do you see full joint custody more in those circumstances than you would otherwise? We do. We, okay. we see full joint custody more and more, but when you're dealing with divorce, a lot of times you're not going to get people that's going to act reasonable. Mm -hmm. You get people that are so angry um, that they can't overcome that and look at the best interest of the child. Unfortunately, we see a lot of situations where you can't get over that anger, whichever party, and you can't look at, well, I may be hurting my child. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we deal with a lot of cases where uh, one or both parents use the child as a pawn mm -hmm. to, to try to get back at the other. Well, I'm gonna take custody away from you because I know that's gonna make you angry. But the, the parents that do it right the ones that, that recognize we can't get along, but we're not gonna punish our children because of that. Yeah. Those, are, those are the ones that do it right, but yeah. unfortunately it may be few and far between. Whose money is the support? Uh, th this is a question we get a lot of times too. We get, I'll give you a good example. Father um, says, I'm paying money to my wife. My wife is using this for her benefit. She's not using it for the child's benefit to pay for the child's stuff. I'm sure that's not the first time you've ever heard that issue before. No. Is the money for the benefit of the children? Is it to help support mom? If it's not alimony, I'm just talking about child support here. What, what, how does that work? The, the child support money is for the child. Now that being said, the father can't demand an accounting. Mm -hmm. The mother doesn't have to report, here's what I'm doing with the money. So the money goes to the, to the parent, to the mother in this example. Um, but it is the child's money, so much so that oftentimes you'll have a uh, a, a couple that'll come in and they'll say, money's not really an issue. Uh, I don't want child support from him. Uh, that's not how it works. The judge orders child support because that money is for the child and the child can't waive that. So uh, it is the child's money, but there's not a, there's not a mechanism by which the, the wife has to account for every gotcha. penny that goes out. Gotcha. How long, uh, a question we've got here, how long does the parent how long are they required to pay child support? At 19, uh, a child is officially an adult in the state of Alabama. So child support payments go until age 19. Uh, after that, that's it. Um, there used to be uh, a case in, in Alabama that, that allowed a parent to pay what's called post-minority support. So if a, if a child was going to college, the judge could extend child support payments. Uh, that, in the last couple of years, was ruled unconstitutional. So age 19, and that, that's it. What if you have a child that uh, is a little more mature, by 17, 18 years old, they're uh, earning their own income, living on their own. Does that impact at all child support obligations? You, you, can, you can go back on a, on a modification okay. and, and prove that the child is self-supporting. And, and that is something that the judge could take into account to reduce or eliminate child support. Um, and I'm assuming that, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about custody where you could go for a modification from a custody perspective. Same thing true if there's a change in circumstance, a father or a, husband or a wife uh, loses a job uh, or something changes significantly, uh, can you go back and modify whatever support obligations you had? Yes, you can. And for those reasons, let's say the, the paying parent gets a, a big increase in income. 
you would you would go back to court for the modification or a decrease if they lose their job through no fault of their own. The judge bases <laughs> child support on your ability to earn, not necessarily what you're earning. Okay. So you can't come to court and say, well, I'm going to take a, a minimum wage job if you have the ability to make more. Take a sales rep, for example, because we sometimes will get this question, so I know this is there's someone out there thinking this. Sales rep has a base salary, but he is also incentivized or bonused in ways based on his production. Is the income based on just his, his uh, total package, or is it just based on his his actual salary that he makes, how, how does that work? It's based on his total package and what happens when you fill out that child support guideline sheet I spoke about earlier, the judge is gonna wanna see um, if your income fluctuates from one month to the next. And a lot of people that own their own business or are in sales are gonna do that. The judge is gonna get an average. He's gonna okay. say, okay, show me your last year's income and we're gonna do an average. So how is that enforced? Um, what, what, you know, what the judge requires how, what, what sort of follow-up and, and how, is, how are folks he held accountable? There's two different ways, David. It's uh, through the Department of Human Resources. They have a child support enforcement division. So if you're a parent not getting support and it's been ordered, you can go to them and they, they will take your case uh, free of charge mm -hmm. and they will handle the child support enforcement. The other way is to go back to your attorney or, or go see an attorney and have the attorney file a petition to hold the non-paying parent in contempt. Mm -hmm. uh, if the parent's not paying child support and they're supposed to, they can be punished by jail time, they can be punished uh, in a variety of ways according to the judge. Typically right. the judges that we see, uh, jail is a, a last option. Right. They'll bring you up and, and ask why and, and you better have a good reason, but if, if it continues to be a problem, the judges will, will lock you up. I know we're going to break. We, we're going to delve more into this topic uh, after the break, but I will tell you one of the very interesting, unique components to this law uh, and the requirement to pay child support is we don't have debtors' prisons in society. Mm -hmm. This is one of the only circumstances where when you are obligated to pay something and you don't, you do have the ability as one punishment the judge has his, at, at their disposal is jail time, which is tremendous teeth to be able to get people to pay child mm -hmm. support. Yeah, yeah, get their attention for sure. Time for us to take our final break of the evening as we head to break. A reminder of how you can get in touch with us. Also, if you uh, enjoy social media, Facebook and Twitter, Hollis Wright, they're on there as well. Facebook, just search the term Hollis Wright. On Twitter, it's Hollis underscore Wright. Stay tuned, the final segment of The Attorneys coming right up. I'm Tyler Vale with the law firm of Hollis Wright. In court, attorneys are not allowed to tell juries certain things. For example, we cannot talk about a defendant's net worth, meaning the defendant's ability, resources, or insurance to pay a verdict. In this week's Legal 411, we're answering the question, why can't lawyers talk about a defendant's net worth to a jury? Rule 403 of the Alabama Rules of Evidence states, although relevant, Evidence may be excluded if its probative value is substantially outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice, confusion of the issues, or misleading the jury, or by considerations of undue delay, waste of time, or needless presentation of cumulative evidence. Long-standing Alabama cases have held that the net worth of a defendant falls under this catch-all rule. The reasoning behind the rule is that if a jury knows a defendant is wealthy, then the jury might award more money to the plaintiff. And this goes one step further. If an attorney makes any remarks that suggest the defendant is responsible because he is rich and the plaintiff is poor, that can be grounds for a new trial. If you're ever on a jury, the reality in our state is this. In almost every lawsuit that goes to trial, the attorneys representing both the plaintiff and the defendant have already looked at whether there is sufficient insurance coverage or assets to satisfy a verdict. The reality is this. The parties would not pursue a civil lawsuit if damages could not be paid after a jury returns a verdict. So even though lawyers cannot mention the net worth of a defendant during a trial, there could still be resources available to pay a verdict in court. Please remember, your call, email, or text to the attorneys is free. All of us at Hollis Wright want to help answer your questions on real issues you face. Remember, a competent lawyer will respond to every question you send in. That's our pledge and promise to you.
We're learning all about family law tonight. Appreciate you being with us. And just a few minutes remaining. If you have a question, boy, now's the time to get it in. Call, text, email, get that question in to us. A question we've got here. Does the payment of child support have any bearing on a parent's visitation rights? <laughs> David, it does not. And it kind of goes back to the old saying, two wrongs don't make a right. right. If, uh, if a person's not paying child support, it's awful tempting for that other parent to say, well, you're not paying, so I'm not gonna let you have your visitation. I'm not gonna let you see the kids. That's not how it works. Uh, you, you have a obligation to pay child support. The other parent has an obligation to follow the, the court's order as it relates to visitation. And, and the, the two have nothing to do with one another. And if they don't, I guess that's whenever you revisit with your attorney and say they're not fulfilling their end of the bargain. It's really not your job to mete out the punishment to right. the spouse, I guess. Right, and in fact, you want to be the party that goes into court with what we call clean hands. Yeah. Judge, I, I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. My hands are clean. Right. They're the ones that are not providing me the visitation that they're supposed to or they're not uh, paying the child support like they're supposed to. Let's go back just for a moment to custody, a question um, that I'd like the viewers to understand. Um, when does a child have the ability to stand up in court and explain to a court maybe where he wants to be or she wants to be? Does that happen at a certain age? How does that work? Any, any child at any age can be a witness in a divorce case. Okay. Um, Typically, you hate to do that unless, unless you just absolutely have to. There is no age. Uh, obviously, the older and more mature a child is, the more that the judge is going to listen to what they have to say. Mm -hmm. uh, and typically, if both attorneys agree, that child can testify in the judge's chambers. So they're not on the witness stand, and they're not in front of their parents. So, so the judge, if, if both attorneys agree, the judge will take the child in the back and just speak one on one with the child, and, and that way the child's not under pressure of the parents. Pressure of the yeah. parents to yeah. say one thing that, that may or may not be true. Now I know that we will get one of these questions from a grandparent. We get some fired up grandparents sometimes. They're like, you know, I am not getting any visitation anytime, especially when they're with the other spouse that you know is not my biologic child. I know the law's changed in that area. How, how does that set right now insofar as it relates to a grandparent's ability to have visitation and time with the child? There is no grandparent's rights statute anymore. There used to be. There used to be a statute that was very detailed about a judge could give grandparents visitation. Uh, that was ruled unconstitutional. The, the Supreme Court has said it's up to the parents. The parents have the fundamental right to raise their children how they see fit. And they have the right to decide how often or if at all they visit grandparents. But you're right, Josh, that is something that we deal with a lot and it's a sad situation sometimes because you've got a lot of good grandparents, you've got grandparents that want to spoil their grandchildren and, and play a role and for whatever reason uh, the parents won't allow it. But that's their right. There is no right to grandparents' visitation uh, with children anymore. If somebody's got joint custody, do they have the ability to uh, I know this sounds a little petty, but I, I, I get questions like this sometimes, and the show will. Um, do they have the ability to talk with a coach in an athletic event of a child and get the schedule and attend events even when they are not um, the custodial parent for the weekend, for example? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. They, they have every right as a parent, even if they don't have what we call true joint custody. If you're just visiting every other weekend with your children, you have the right to go to a coach. You have a right to go to the doctor's office and say, hey, I'm, I'm the parent, I want to see medical records. You have the right to go to schools, absolutely. I didn't think this guy could be stumped, and I don't think I stumped him off camera, but I asked him about the tax consequences of this, and he was able to answer my question quickly. But uh, in short, if a husband is paying child support, or uh, I guess an ex-husband, a father's paying child support, does he get to deduct those uh, payments to uh, the child? No. Okay. Child support payments are not tax deductible. Okay. And the question I tried to stump him on was whether or not it's taxable to the mom. He, from a lawyer's perspective, analyzed it and said, well, if they're not deductible, they're probably not going to be taxable. <laughs> but it's a good question. No, I'm, sure. I'm not sure either of us know the answer to that. But the point is that those, those, you can't deduct those on your tax return when right. you're going to make payments because that's no different than if you were in a relationship 
um, and you were making payments to buy things for parents, you know, for children, et cetera, um, you wouldn't be able to deduct it. So it's going to work the same the way. The problem with having an attorney who has an accounting degree. Well, then, uh, <laughs> that covers, that's covers good, all well, the that's bases. I thought I could, I thought I could <laughs> stump the guy. I can't do it. I don't know what it is. Right. I need to bring other guests on the show. Um, how, how did you get into this area of the law just in general? Was it something that you just kind of uh, made your way to? or it, 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 Practicing in a small town, and, and my law firm is in center, uh, we do a, a wide variety of things, but this is an area that affects a lot of people. Uh, big city, small city, everybody's affected by divorce. And uh, I kind of gravitated toward it as a way you can really help people. You, you can really help people a lot of times going through a divorce and dealing with child custody and, and issues. Uh, people are at their lowest. They're, they're going through a, a lot of hard times. and. And I guess I, I was kind of drawn to that as, as a way to, to really use, use my degree to help people. Yeah. And just a couple of minutes sure. remaining, but I want to give both of you an opportunity to give a final charge and some thoughts to leave with our viewers, and, and we'll have you go ahead and go first, please. Well, as I said, this is an area of law that really affects people. It, it, it affects people sometimes at their lowest point when you're dealing with, I'm about to lose my marriage and I may lose my kids, or I, I may not be a, 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 a major figure in their life like I want to be. Uh, but I would encourage people, if you're going through that, talk to a lawyer, uh, talk to somebody that's experienced in, in this area of the law that can walk you through, that can tell you how to act and tell you how, you know, don't put your kids in the middle of a fight. Right. Um, go through your lawyer, try to do things uh, the right way, try to do things that are not gonna put your kids in the middle. Try to make sure that the, the child custody, the child support issues are separate. You're gonna fuss about things and there's property distributions and things in divorces, but don't bring the kids in the middle. Yeah, I think understanding the uh, child support laws, um, uh, that there are modification options if mm -hmm. uh, circumstances in life does in fact change, um, those are all reasons why you want to go to a lawyer and you want to go early so that you're not showing up to the lawyer's office um, when you're on the eve of your, your hearing on issues of custody and support. You want right. to make sure you've got somebody involved from the start to be able to lead, guide, and direct you through the process and uh, hopefully help uh, make the process a little uh, less stressful for you. And I think tonight's uh, conversation has done that. Thanks to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you for being with us as well. We're always grateful uh, to have you here with us. We'll look for you next time as we wrap things up. Maybe you got a question that was not dealt with. Here's how you can get that to the firm of Hollis Wright. We'll see you next week right here on The Attorneys. Thanks for watching The Attorneys, sponsored by the law firm of Hollis Wright. 